the end. So kind of the title gives it away, that's what we're doing right now. Um, and, and you might not all be able to read it, but we'll talk about it. We've done the introductions. So what are we going to discuss today? East Stand Development is obviously one, and I'll put it first because it is one of the, the, the big topics of discussion. Trading ground. Now, I'd have to put this first for Chris Wilder, but because um, he moans about that every day. <laughs> Match day experience, fans village, community, marketing and social media, commercial, I have to make sure I get the distance right, and football. And I put football last because that's what we really all want to talk about, myself included. Um, so then, and then we'll do a question and answer. So, so what we'll do, we'll save all the questions till the end. Hopefully I'll answer a few of them in the, in, in the presentation anyway. Um, so one of the first things I'll say is, one of the, the biggest things for us is, obviously the Supporters Trust asked us to come out and do a fans forum as, as quickly as we could, which is, which is great, because for me it's a chance to actually talk about a little bit about what we want to do and etc. But one thing I want us to bear in mind is we are, we worked it out just now, Today is a six week anniversary of us taking over the club. Uh, is that all exactly? It feels like a lot longer because of, uh, you know, we were eight weeks trying to do something that should have really only taken two weeks. And I will say, that it's not, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of that was our fault. We wanted to get in and get it done as quick as we could. Because we feel we're probably behind in some decisions, etc. If we'd have had six extra weeks, we'd have had more time to actually make some decisions, etc. So, so we're six weeks in. We actually think we've achieved a reasonable amount in those six weeks, and you know, and more stuff behind the scenes. But East Stand development. You know, we're in detailed discussions with Buckingham's and the council. You know, that is not the perfect development. Okay, there are still some complications regarding the leases the land that we're all trying to work through together. It's not, this is not, and it will not be an easy tran uh, transition um, because there are leases on some of the land. We managed, we feel we managed to do quite a good deal with the council and, and Buckingham's at the time, um, but there are still some ongoing issues and Buckingham's and the council have their own issues, etc., etc. It wasn't, It wasn't and is not a very clean situation. Uh, we don't think it's the ideal design. I'm sure there's a lot of you don't think. And in fact, my feeling is a lot of you, and we didn't during the transaction even know what the design is. Because there's been so many... <laughs> there's, there's been so many designs that are put out there. And even researching, even when I, when I was flying over, I'd done a bit of research and I saw that CGI that was put up. And I was still trying to work out how you would see part about 60% of the game if you were sat next to the wall with those seats. I'm pleased to say that is not the design that we're going to follow through with in terms of um, that CGI. So that, there aren't going to be that restrictive new seats in that way. Knocking down and starting again, it has been a consideration, but there's probably a feeling, and, and I'll qualify all of this East Stand stuff with subject two, because the decisions haven't been made yet. You know, as we've said, six weeks in, and Christmas was a lot of that. Um, so, so we are still in conversations. Myself and Mike are going to see Buckingham's tomorrow. Talk to the architects again. So, so those our decisions are still probably six weeks away, or um, and, and and even now I don't even want to put time frames on it because. Uh, but I will say that I will try and keep everyone as as informed as possible throughout the process. <coughs> Um, oh, that went through a bit too quick in there. Option of just putting seats back in. This is a question I've been asked quite a lot. Now, there is an option to do this. It's not an immediate option. It's not in time for Saturday at Milton Keynes. It's not going to take a couple of weeks. This is still a, 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 it's still a three to four month job. And, and some of that is a commercial decision because there would be a significant amount of money uh, needed to do that on top of what it, what, what it will cost to be absorbed when you finish the stand. So if you said it costs, you know, two hundred and fifty thousand to to um, oh, fantastic. I wasn't. I wasn't to say keep turning cell phones on. Yeah, okay. 
Where, where are you? Um, uh, if say, if it, I've lost the numbers now. Um, if it costs you 250,000 to put the seats in, which is give or take roughly about what it would cost, there's probably about 70,000, 75,000 of that would, is additional cost that wouldn't be absorbed into the main stand. So it, it, it's a big decision, and you would never recoup that in the, in the games left in terms of 2,000 seats. Um, so it, it, that's definitely been considered, but I'm not sure, I can't see it happening in the beginning of the season. But we do want to make sure we can get seats in that stand as quickly as possible. So even if there are some problems with developing the whole stand for next season, I think we would take a view that we would try and get the seats in for next season at the, at the bare minimum. But again, subject to final decisions.